Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. Just bad luck or something else behind a string of accidents involving Detroit EMS. Tonight, we're getting answers about the frequency of these crashes and the possible reasons why. We're glad you're with us for Local 4 News at 6. I'm Devin Skillian. I'm Kimberly Gill. The latest incident happening just this morning on Detroit's west side, an ambulance and a sedan in a crushing collision outside Sinai Grace Hospital. It's only March, but that makes five five accidents involving Detroit EMS and another driver this year. And four of those, the EMS crew was found to not be at fault. Sean Lay has been looking into these accidents. And Sean, so how does the number of crashes line up with what you'd expect from a department that runs 24-7? The department and the city saying running 24-7 is a big deal. Ambulances out there all the time. Look, early this morning, another crash, serious crash involving an EMS rig. Sources within the department tipping us off about it, wanting us to look into it. So we did. Here's what we're finding out. Medic 26, Outer Drive and Schaefer, Outer and Schaefer. Medic 18, of an injury accident. It happened just before 7 this morning at Outer Drive and Schaefer on Detroit's west side, right outside Sinai Grace Hospital. A Detroit EMS ambulance transporting a patient with non-life-threatening injuries and a Buick colliding here in the intersection. All of that glass here on the sidewalk, this collision was so hard it sent the car through the bus stop. Last week on Michigan Avenue and Lanyo, a car and Detroit EMS ambulance collide. The driver of the silver car was injured. It's early March, and so far Detroit EMS has been involved in five crashes, four of which investigations found the EMS crews were not at fault. Well, everyone goes through the driver's training program. Yeah. We're constantly uh, uh, talking about accidents. It's, it's always in the forefront of the mind of the responder. So it's just unfortunately one of those things with the amount of call volume that we have that uh, that happens. What exactly caused this crash this morning? It's still under investigation. The Detroit EMS unit was on a code three, which is a non life threatening transport of a person. The policy is for no lights or sirens for a code three run tonight. Detroit EMS is asking all of us to be more aware of them. Detroit EMS on the streets. But unfortunately, in the times we're living in, you know, not everyone is uh, everyone is preoccupied in there. Some are still texting on their phones. Some have the music up too loud. And uh, once you're in a vehicle, you know, you're responsible for that vehicle. And we need everybody to just kind of pay a little bit more attention, especially when there's an emergency vehicle in the area and just slow down. So tonight, Detroit Fire, Detroit EMS asking you to give them more room on the road. You can see, though, Kimberly and Devin, that was a significant accident, collision there right outside Sinai Grace. That is all still under investigation. In the meantime, asking for more on the road. Also, what about injuries from that crash? We're told the people in the Buick, a man and the woman, are okay. The only injury was a minor thumb injury to one of the medics. We'll stay on it. We're live tonight. Sean Lee, local for okay, back to you. No major injuries, so that's good. All right, Sean, we appreciate it. That's right. A uh, tumultuous past few months for the MSU Board of Trustees took another dramatic twist in an unusual usual late Sunday night Zoom meeting. The board chair, Rima Vassar, stepped down. The board installed a new chair, and now it's up to the governor to decide the fate of two trustees. This follows a major investigation into allegations ranging from ethics violations to bullying on the board. Local force Rod Maloney went to East Lansing today to gauge student reaction to all of that. A lot of upheaval on the MSU campus recently. The fatal shooting, fallout from Dr. Nasser, Mel Tucker's exit from the athletic department, and then there's this, the investigation brought against the Board of Trustees to try and figure out what was going on there. Has a lot of students who otherwise wouldn't pay attention to school politics watching very closely. When board members endlessly spar with the chair. I'd like to ask you to stop attacking me. You have no idea and break out into tears lashing out at the now former board chair, Dr. Rima Vassar, change became inevitable. The university spent thousands on a 66 page report detailing this and other concerning behavior, saying Vassar bullied a former president and she and trustee Dennis Denno wielded power outside the board's authority, intimating childish behavior. I do think this creates an obstacle. It is disappointing. And many students like sophomore Emma Ayers have been watching. It's just a lot of disappointment. I mean, there's been so many scandals going on at MSU that I think one thing we've really been holding out for is that our administration would be supportive and ready to have like important conversations about what these next years are going to look like as we're going through a sort of transition process. That transition starts with new President Kevin Guskowitz and new Board of Trustees Chair Dan Kelly. Yet senior Samantha Good called all of the previous behavior 
disappointing. It has to be. Yeah. If people aren't agreeing, people are bickering like children, like you said, then that's not a way to move forward past anything, no matter how big or small it is. I believe that these are people that we look up to, people we should be taken as an example. And if these people are doing things like that, then what should we expect out of the future? Now, board chair, former board chair Vassar and also Dennis Denno uh, have been referred to the governor to find out what's happened to them. She could remove them. We'll see where that goes. In the meantime, the report also says that the board itself needs to undergo some more training to figure out precisely what their role in the governess of MSU is. And they basically said that what was going on has little to do with what they're supposed to be doing. Reporting live, Rod Maloney. Welcome for Oh, boy. All right, Rod. Well, Detroit is officially one step closer to saying goodbye to one of the biggest symbols of blight in the city. Drone 4 was overhead as crews began taking down the next portion of the Packard plant on Detroit's east side. The city took over the land back in 2022, and over the past few years, crews have been working to demolish the massive structure, which has been sitting empty for decades. 68 years ago, Packard Motors stopped operating in this plant. And for 68 years, the ruins of this building have been a weight around the neck of Detroit's recovery. Officials say they expect the majority of the plant to be demolished by the end of the year. A man has been charged in the Oakland County locker room attack that was stopped by a former Michigan football star. 20-year-old Malik Smith is accused of assaulting an elderly man in the locker room of the Farmington Family YMCA last Friday. Smith faces one count of assault with intent to murder. Former Michigan wide receiver Braylon Edwards was also at the YMCA and he stepped in. He says he grabbed the younger man just as he was about to slam the older man's head into a counter. Today, Oakland County Prosecutor Karen McDonald commended Edwards for stepping Stepping in to prevent further harm, but the attack victim remains hospitalized and still in critical condition. In a landmark ruling today, the U.S. Supreme Court said individual states cannot kick Donald Trump off their ballots. It's a resounding victory for the former president who's running to reclaim the White House. The court's ruling was unanimous. It reversed a decision from Colorado's highest court, which determined Trump could not serve as president under the 14th Amendment of the Constitution. That court decided Trump took part in an insurrection with his actions leading up to January 6th. But the Supreme Court decision says Congress has to set the rules on how the 14th Amendment is enforced. The ruling affects more than Colorado. It also reverses decisions in the states of Maine and Illinois, where Trump was also kicked off the ballot. The high court chose not to address the issue of whether Trump's actions rose to the level of insurrection. Meantime, the high court has decided to stay out of a battle over free speech on college campuses. That centers on a lawsuit brought by Speech First against Virginia Tech after the school created a biased response team to handle complaints over things like sexist jokes and racist name calling. Suit claimed the existence of such teams encouraged students to monitor each other's speech and, quote, snitch on each other. But a lower court recently ruled against speech first, saying Virginia Tech hadn't caused any actual harm because their bias team never had the authority to punish anyone, and the school actually did end the program. Well, today the high court agreed, sending the case back to federal court to be dismissed as moot. Back in 2018, it's estimated more than 250 schools had bias response teams or similar forms of incident tracking. University of Michigan, in fact, had one but dropped it in 2019 in response to a legal challenge from the same group in the Virginia Tech case. The first ever over-the-counter birth control pill approved in the U.S. is now being shipped to stores and pharmacies across the state. Those shipments started today, prompting many to ask when and where O-Pill will be on shelves. It's the first birth control pill that will be available without a prescription. O-Pill shipments are now underway, and the oral contraceptive should be in stores and online in the coming days and weeks. So to know that it's coming, I think, is a win for everybody. If it's taken as directed, the company behind the pill says it can be up to 98 percent effective at preventing pregnancy. It works as a mini pill using only the hormone progestin. And our decades of experience and knowledge with progesterone to say O-pill is safe and making it over the counter is going to improve access. 
The manufacturer suggested retail price is $19.99 for a one-month supply and $49.99 for a three-month supply. Some of the pharmacies that have said they'll carry it include CVS and Walgreens. You can expect to see it in the family planning section, and it'll also be available online at opill.com and other online retailers. For most birth control, we do recommend that uh, people use a backup form of contraception the whole first month to be safe and follow the instructions and take it at the same time of, of the day, every day. The manufacturer says the company will have a cost assistance program available for qualified low-income and uninsured people. That should be available in the coming weeks. For people who do have insurance, the spokesperson says Opil may be eligible to be paid for or reimbursed through flexible spending or health savings accounts. All right, well, what a day it has been. Uh -huh. March 4th, I'm predicting a very long, hot summer. If it's going to start on March 4th. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Go there. All right, Kim Adams, just a gorgeous day, Kim. It is, and it's an El Nino year, but these warm temperatures are causing some problems in Michigan for those that depend on things like snow plowing and ski resorts and winter activities. So while we are definitely enjoying this, not everyone is quite as happy about it, but we are going to get some colder weather in here for the weekend, so hopefully everybody's happy then. 15 degrees warmer than it was at the same time yesterday in Mount Clemens. Right now it's 23 degrees warmer down in Monroe, so definitely a warm day, so much so, in fact, that we did shatter the record that was set back in 1983 of 69 degrees. We hit 74 today. We have either tied or broken a record now four times already since February 9th, the 9th, the 27th, 28th, and now March 4th. So definitely a very, very warm month. Tomorrow is going to be a little bit different, though. Showers and falling temps. We'll talk about that coming up.